think there's any other way to say it. Yeah, I mean, like if if you're five and seven going into the fourth quarter with the lead, that's not a not a winning recipe for success, I'd say. And honestly, with all the injuries you were just talking about, now we just learned that Malik Beasley is gonna, you know, have the 120 days of house arrest or whatever, possibly. But wasn't the NBA waiting till um, he got sentenced to dish out that suspension so we could possibly seeing Cat come back and now we're losing Malik. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's going to be a sizable suspension, but the anticipation, at least from the Wolf side has been once this day occurred and we always knew that February 9th was sentencing day. We always knew that, that he wasn't going to do jail time, Yeah. but that there was going to be some sort of punishment handed down. So it's home confinement. He can still play. So the home confinement technically will be served after the season. Like he's not, he's not missing any games unless the NBA decides, Hey, you're suspended for two games or three games, but I'll just tell you this, like I know people with the Wolves that are anticipating at some point here and probably pretty quick, although maybe it takes a few days, but that the NBA is going to hand down some sort of suspension. But I don't anticipate it being a lengthy suspension. Like I think at most three games, maybe two games, and maybe it's it's nothing. But but I do think, you know, just logic tells me just based on if you read the police report, if you followed the case, yep. you know, with, with him pleading the way he did, like, I would be pretty surprised if, if the NBA doesn't hand down some sort of suspension. I feel like that would just be such a dagger for, their, like, the Timberwolves, especially with, like, I mean, I just feel like Malik is, like, the only one, really, who's just, he's been steadily, like, giving it his all the whole season. And he's kind of just been the guy that we can always lean towards. And then now just to lose him, I think, would just be, that would kind of be the dagger. If there already is. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about the dagger, Peyton, but it would stink. He's been their best player. That's what, yeah. Like, he's not making the all-star team. I, I think we know that just because the team has been so bad. Yeah. But, like, his stats are right up there with, with guys that will make the all-star team. He's been that good. Yeah. Credit to him. And he's in phenomenal shape. Like, I think a lot of guys, you know, with with just the, the couple preseason games, the condensed training camp – I think a lot of guys needed the the early portion of the season to really work back into peak shape. Malik Beasley, credit to him. He came ready to go December 23rd. Like that first game against Detroit, he was in tip-top shape. So he's been great. He's exceeded many expectations. I mean, that contract he signed with the fourth year being a team option, that contract he signed looks like a really, really nice contract for the team. So when um when Cat comes back, do you think that uh, Malik will be able to like go back down to the third role, or do you think he's just is he going to keep putting up numbers like this when Cat returns? Well, I mean, I think they need to still look for him. I think they need to run plays for him. I've been I've been troubled in in some of these fourth quarters yeah. when they've gone away from him, you know. So especially if if he's hot early on, they better darn well find a way to get him the ball and let him decide. You know, I mean if. If a, a second body's, you know, coming his way and he needs to move the ball and, and doesn't want to take a four shot, fine. But I want him to be in a position to make a lot of decisions in games the rest of the year, even though I can argue that the rest of this season at this point, because they're not making the playoffs, I would argue a lot of the rest of this season is about the, the youth. You mm -hmm. know, we need to find out how much D'Lo and Cat can coexist. They've only played five games together. But then to me, the rest of this year is about Anthony Edwards. It's about Jada McDaniels. It's about, you know, Jarrett Culver, who should be back before the week is over, I was told. And if it's not the end of this week, it'll be early next week. You know, we yeah. still need to figure out on, on Culver. Now, I've reached a conclusion that I don't see a whole lot there, that I would trade him while you can. But I think for the Wolves' sake, they probably need to see a little bit more to, to reach that conclusion. You know, so there's other guys, right? I mean, Noel's finally getting minutes. That's something I've been pining for for a while. I'm glad he's getting minutes. The defense has a ways to go, but he can light it up. Like he wasn't just the random PAC 12 player of the year yeah. at Washington his last year. Like Jalen Noel is a really good player, you know? So, so keep giving him run. You've got multiple more team options on his contract, you know? So it's a really team friendly contract. So keep giving him run, you know, decide if, if he can be your seventh or eighth man you know, one of those first guards off the bench. So that, that to me is what a lot of the rest of the year is about, mm -hmm. but yeah, in crunch time, there's something to be said about learning to win games. So yeah, I want Beasley on the court in crunch time. I want cat on the court in crunch time. I want D on the court in crunch time. Let's see how, how these guys can coexist.
Yeah, most definitely. And I think, um, well, here's another thing too, is the, uh, 